As Tesla's Cybertruck delivery event draws nearer and nearer, we're finding out more and more details about what Cybertruck is going to look like and the features it's going to include. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. First of all, a big shout out to Dylan Loomis over at Electrified for alerting me to this. I had not actually seen Matthew DR's post previously, and so I was like alerted to that from his uh, from his show from yesterday, Thursday. Anyway, I was going to do one on the IAC conference and Elon talking about space, but that is going to be a, a substantial undertaking. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to do that later today and release it tomorrow. In the meantime, I wanted to talk about details with the Cybertruck. So this video is going to be based on Matthew's tweets. Of course, you know, take this all the speculation we don't know, but I want to add, if you haven't seen my video about a leaked Cybertruck interior video, you should definitely check that out because it's got details about what the look of the interior of the Cybertruck is going to be like. This is more about the specifications, so they're kind of complementary videos. All right, so starting at the top, we've got braking Tesla Cybertruck to have bi-directional charging and a 240 volt outlet. So the bi-directional charging, not a big surprise to me. The 240 volt outlet, however, is really, really cool. Of course, the 240 volt thing is a big deal. If you live in the United States, the plugs that are in your wall are 120 volts and the 240s are like your dryer outlet or for charging a car or for a hot tub or a stove or something like that. So they're, they're very high voltage. They can push through a lot of amps and everything. So it's a pretty big deal. If you can run something off the 240 rather than the 120 in the vehicle, that would be an impressive amount of power that you could put into some tools that you want to use on the worksite. And of course, if for some reason you needed to charge a car somewhere, like, you know, you're offsite, somebody runs out of battery power or something like that, you could very rapidly charge up using the 240 volt. I assume that would be possible to do vehicle to vehicle as and in addition to vehicle to grid. So anyway, it's bi-directional. It means you can obviously charge up your vehicle, but you can also charge something else. You can either run a tool that runs on 120 or 240, or you could charge up another EV to some extent to allow them to get to a, a supercharger or something. So that's pretty nice news and a great way to start his thread. Also note, he says performance rivals a Plaid Model X. We're going to discuss that a little bit later, some of the feel and everything. But I assume what that means is it will be able to accelerate approximately as fast corner somewhat the same way. It'll have similar drive characteristics, which will be pretty darn impressive for a gigantic truck. Continuing on here, and this is a special one for Scott Walter because he is Frunk Boy. He likes to try to climb into Frunks of things. I watched him do it with a Lucid. He attempted to get into the Frunk of the Lucid and have us close the hood, but we couldn't quite do it. Anyway, a guy who was 5'7 was able to lay fat flat in the Frunk, which means that he could, you know, lay sideways, I assume, across it. If you haven't seen the Frunk, it's it's relatively shallow looking, but but very long. So it's kind of a shelf or something. It's it's not it doesn't really have a lip in it, as far as I could tell from the prototypes that we've seen all of that kind of stuff. But anyway, a 5'7 person being able to lay, you know, stretched out is pretty impressive. That's a wide truck. Scott, I think is about 6'2-ish, something like that. So he's going to have to fold up a little bit, but I expect that this will be a much easier task than trying to get into a Model Y or a Lucid Frunk. So that's fun, but of course it means there is a lot of space in that Frunk. I have a feeling that's going to be my grocery space. Like rather than opening the tonneau cover and going into the back of the vehicle or something, I'll throw my week's groceries into the front in the Frunk and be able to pull it out very, very easily. More on that in a minute, but first, it's getting on towards fall in the Northern Hemisphere. The weather's getting awesome and a little bit chilly, and also we have things like pumpkin spice latte and cakes and pies and the holiday season coming up. And while that's all something to look forward to, it's not the greatest thing for your body. The shorter days, the colder weather, the bad food that you tend to eat, all of that makes you feel a lot less healthy than you do in the summer. But what, you might ask, can you do to help out this situation? What you can do is do like me and start drinking AG1. This is packed with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, adaptogens. It's amazing foundational nutrition to help you feel better as the cold weather and holidays approach. And you know what? It tastes fantastic too. Sweet with a hint of pineapple. Oh man, that's good. And it has no added sugar, which is fantastic in this season of the year when sugar seems to be everywhere. I can tell you for a fact that since starting to take AG1, I have much more consistent energy. I don't have those roller coaster highs and lows of energy. I have more focus. I can get more done. And I'm also better able to resist some of those junk food temptations that are especially prevalent this time of year. And if you click my link in the description, you get five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamins D3 and K2. So what are you waiting for? 
for. If you want to feel your best during this holiday season, take my advice and start taking AG1 today. A big thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. Next up, in a little bit of a bummer, but not a super surprise, there will be no ramp built into the tailgate. So if you remember the announcement event back in 2019, the guy drove a four-wheeler up onto the back of the Cybertruck. It kind of squatted down a little bit, and there was a ramp that went down. So apparently that won't be there. I have a feeling that is just an opening for third-party developers to come up with something like a ramp for the tailgate. So yeah, we'll see. Probably will you'll be able to purchase something like that for a few hundred dollars to add onto the truck, but it is a little bit of a bummer. It doesn't come with it by default. And here's where we get back to the Model X comparison. Suspension more comfortable than an SX. That's impressive because those vehicles are pretty darn comfortable to drive in. And right below that, we see feels more luxurious than an S and X, which is also pretty wild because again, those are fairly luxurious cars. Obviously, Tesla has a minimalist style, so they don't have like crazy luxury, like Stephen Mark Ryan says, unicorn pubes, you know, sewn into the seats or something like that. Anyway, so it's relatively minimalist, but it's impressive if people think that it feels more luxurious than a Model S or Model X, because those do feel significantly more luxurious than the Model 3 and Model Y. And a truck feeling that way, it will be a very interesting kind of vibe. And then one that makes my heart particularly happy is the turning radius is amazing. I believe, I don't know this, I have to check to see if this is true, but I believe our new 2023 Model Y has a better turning radius than our old Model Y that we bought in December of 2020. Not positive about that, but that car always had a poor turning radius and the, the new Model Y feels like it's a, a, a better turning radius. Anyway, with the rear steering right so that the back wheels can turn as well as the front wheels. You could see from videos already that the Cybertruck can turn basically on a dime, much, much better than most trucks and, and better than probably the Model Y, at least the older version that I had. So anyway, the, the, a smaller turning radius will make me a happy camper. So I hope that that actually is true. Here, of course, is an interesting one. The Cybertruck delivery event has been scheduled, but not publicly announced yet. I really wish that they would publicly announce it. Whenever it is, I just need time to plan. It would be interesting. I'm trying to recall, but I believe back in 2019, the delivery event was was like the 21st of November. It was a very late Thanksgiving for anybody who lives outside the United States. The fourth Thursday of, of every November is Thanksgiving, a major holiday. And it just happened to be very late that, that year. This year, if they wanted to reschedule it on that date to sort of have like a four year anniversary kind of thing, it would only be like two days before Thanksgiving. So I don't think that they're probably going to do that. But there are rumors, including Dylan, who thinks that it's going to be pushed till November. It won't happen in October. October. We don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe within the next, you know, 24 or 48 hours, we'll find out an announcement from Tesla about when that event is going to be. So I will definitely update that. And of course, if I find out like right after filming this, I'll put that as a pinned comment or something down below. This next one is both about our information about things, but also how, you know, how much you can go up and down in the truck. It's got air suspension. So the, the lift amount has been rumored to be up to 16 inches, which is a, a very vast amount of, of clearance, you know, suspension height differential. Anyway, the limits are shown in actual clearance instead of low, medium, high, apparently. So you can have a setting of 14.5 inches or something so you can know exactly how far up you've set the suspension. I don't know what the granularity of that is. Obviously, I don't know if it's a half an inch or full inches or <laughs> it's basically just infinite amount. So you can adjust it to 14.375 inches or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, but that will be interesting. And I think useful to a lot of people to not just have the basic, very, very coarse controls, but to have something where you can actually set it to a very particular amount. Then down below, he says, confirmed the performance Cybertruck has the same tri-motor setup as the Plaid. I'm not going to say I called it, but I definitely called it. And then I don't know if he's including that or modifying that, but his post about the post is performance version has the plaid tri-motor powertrain so it's there's the the like the plaid which is the three motor system and then there is the plaid so i don't know if he's confirming that the motors will actually be plaid motors which are very very expensive and very cool motors they are carbon wrapped and all this stuff and they can go to very very high rpms i believe like twenty thousand or something like that but anyway they can do super high rpms i don't know if he's saying that i believe that is what he's saying but he might also just be saying that it's just a three motor setup instead of a two motor or four motor setup. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think what he's saying here is that it's going to get the plaid motors like the S and X. So that will be really impressive if it has those motors. Next up, and this is very true, the frunk is power open closed, which is awesome. This means it will be used much more 
often than in other Teslas. I have to say my wife is forcing me to put my climbing gym shoes in the front of our new car because she doesn't want it to stink because they do smell bad. And and it's a pain in the butt because, you know, you have to open it and then it goes poop like that and opens just a little bit. Then you have to go open it. Then you have to close it manually and push it gently down and all that stuff. It's it's an annoying process. It's not something I enjoy doing. Having a power frunk open and close is going to be a really big deal. And again, for things like groceries and stuff like that, where you can just do it from the app as you're driving, you know, you're rolling your cart out into the parking lot, you open up the frunk, it's right there. You just shove all your groceries in there, move the cart out of the way. If the cart hits the car, it doesn't really matter because it's stainless steel anyway, probably damage the cart more than the car. But anyway, and then you can power close it even from inside the vehicle. So you can get in the vehicle, power close the thing and then start driving driving off. So it's it's going to make that process and the frunk much more useful than it is in the current versions of the vehicles. This next one is actually a really big deal. It sounds like a negative at the start, but it's actually a positive. There are no HVAC ports in the bed, but the mid gate glass does open. So camping in the bed is possible with climate control. So that doesn't mean the seat can go down so you can get the really, really long pass through. But he's saying that there is a window in the back of the truck that you could open. And then of course you can turn on the air conditioning or heating or whatever it is to bleed back into the back of the, the vehicle itself. So you could more easily then use the Cybertruck as a camping type of environment where you could sleep under the tonneau cover or, or put a tent up there or something like that. And then of course, if you get something like the Cyberlander, which, you know, <laughs> I can't wait for that to come out with this, you'll have your own HVAC, you know, inside that Cyberlander camper. But even if you just want to do it relatively primitively, as long as there's a pass through so air can flow, you should be able to get reasonable amount of heat and air conditioning into the back of the vehicle in camp mode. This next one is really interesting after the announcement event and the cracked window and all of that kind of stuff. The windows are not bulletproof. They are double glazed quiet windows, which is what is on all of the other vehicles now, at least in the front part of the vehicle and with the Project Highland refreshed model three, it's all around it. But basically it's two panes of glass with a small laminate between them, which keeps things relatively quiet. So it sounds like they may have gone with a less expensive option and or they wanted more quiet rather than the bulletproofness and things like that. Anyway, it sounds like those those windows and the glass around the vehicle are going to be more in line with what the current Tesla vehicles are rather than this new type of glass. I'm sure it will still be very, very strong, but it's not going to be bulletproof. Next up, and I'm not sure about the efficacy of this one, the floor is carpeted like other Teslas, not rubber like a Jeep or a Raptor. I have a feeling this is going to immediately lead to third parties like EV Annex and LaserFit and other companies creating all weather mats for the Cybertruck. So that's great. That means that other companies can make some money off of that. I, I think that's not necessarily a great choice for a truck because I think a truck should have all weather mats by default, but you know, Tesla's going to do what Tesla's going to do. A little outtake here that's not directly Cybertruck related, but it looks like Tesla is going to allow you to connect Bluetooth headphones to the rear screen in the Model S, the Model X, and the new Project Highland Model 3. So that will actually be great for parents so they don't have to listen to their kids complaining or them playing the, the whatever it is for their TV show all around the cabin of the car. They can just have their own headphones and they can have it private. Next up, Matthew says, when asked about range, the leaker could not share any info, probably um, would not share any. If you saw the leaked interior video, the person trying to like push it, it said like 84% and he was trying to actually change it over to miles, but it wouldn't do that. So clearly Tesla has disabled that right now. They want to leave that as a surprise when they do the delivery event. Anyway, he says, I expect the battery size to be 120 to 140 kilowatt hours, which makes reasonable sense. And the range to be less than the 500 stated during the prototype unveil. So take that as you will. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait for Tesla to reveal that. Nobody really has a full answer at this point. Next up, unlike other Teslas, the Cybertruck will have a spare wheel, which is standard on legacy full-size trucks. That's interesting. I don't know where they're going to put it, but that's it's interesting to know and probably, again, useful for a truck because trucks can get into some stuff where they might have problems with the tire, off-roading, work sites, things like that. So, you know, nails and rocks and all of that kind of stuff makes it more likely that the tire could be punctured. So this is probably a a good thing. There are also multiple tow and trailer modes, which is really cool. So I guess, you know, hauling a camper versus hauling some mulch, which is light, but it's a thing back there versus towing a large boat versus hauling a bunch of stuff in the back bed of the vehicle. So it will be able to adjust to all of that stuff. So that's useful to know. It's not that uh, unexpected, I guess. I would be surprised if they didn't have that, but it's good to get some confirmation of that. And then back to the topic of the 240 volt outlet, the bed has three total outlets. I would imagine one, two, 240 volt outlet and two 120 volt outlets 
he doesn't specify. But anyway, that's that's also useful to know because you don't always need the 240. A lot of times it's useful just to have a 120. Next up, we have the Cybertruck seats are wider and more comfortable than a Model X Plaid. So the wider part is not surprising because it's a very large truck, so it's very wide and you can fit a five foot seven person inside the front. So the wider part is not surprising. The more comfortable part is I expect this is a new generation of seats that Tesla has been working on, and they are always working to make your rear end more comfortable in their vehicles. So I, I really appreciate their seats. I think they have very, very comfortable seats, and they're good for long road trips. And if it's even better in the Cybertruck, that's awesome. Next up is another really cool one. The bed tonneau cover, the vault, can be opened and closed from the app or the MCU, the, the control device, the display on in the front of the vehicle. The tailgate can be opened automatically, but not closed. So that means that the cover can you know roll up and down. You can do that from inside the vehicle or even remotely from your phone app. And you can put the tailgate down automatically via the app or inside the car, but you'll have to close it manually. So that was a question that some people had had, whether they would have some sort of a device that would pull it back up again. I didn't know. I didn't have a good answer. I thought with the front, they definitely would have it automatically open and close. And that sounds like what it's going to do. But with the tailgate, it, you can, you know, basically unlock it. And then it probably just is spring loaded. So it just pushes itself backwards and down. But you'll have to push it back up again yourself. And finally, we have the front bumper camera is viewable from the MCU. That Again, the display. This is an amazing feature for off-roading and parking close to another vehicle slash wall. My Ford F-150 Raptor has this and I love it. And I have to say, I really would love that even in our Model 3 and Model Y. We have a garage with a bunch of stuff at the end of it and we always have to park very close in order to fit between when the door closes and where the front of all this stuff is. And having a front camera that I could turn on while pulling into my, my parking space in the garage would be amazing. It would be really wonderful stuff. So anyway, this will be great, especially for something as large as this, especially for something that does off-roading, to be able to look down and see what the landscape is as you're off-roading. If you're parking in a large area, I, I actually use the backup camera a lot of times. I'll pull in someplace and then not even reverse, but just turn the backup camera on to make sure I'm like within the box. So having that for the front as well would be super, super cool for this kind of stuff. And I, as soon as I get it with the Cybertruck, I'm sure I will very much miss having it in my other Teslas. But anyway, really good feature. Very happy to see that that's going to be there. It does mean there's an extra camera with the Cybertruck if that is the case. But again, not a surprise because I had looked around at the vehicle when I saw it back on shareholder day back in May and there was a small camera on the front of the vehicle. So, you know, <laughs> expected that that was there already, but really, really cool that it will be functional like that and you'll be able to use it. All right, so that's a lot of details about potential features that the Cybertruck will have. Remember that Matthew specifies this as, you know, rumors. And also I will say that again as well. This is speculation. Don't just go crazy and assume all of this stuff is true. And some things we still don't know, like the actual range and all of that stuff. So anyway, we'll have to wait for the delivery event to get some of this information. But it's really cool to see what is likely to be in the truck at this point. Most of these things seem highly reasonable. Nothing out there is like, you know, it doesn't fly or something. Don't have anything about it floating yet so we don't know that but of course we might get that at the delivery event as well who knows maybe they'll like uh, have a thing instead of a test drive in the in the cyber truck they'll actually have it float in the colorado river or something and you can take a test raft on the thing that would be pretty darn cool if they did that anyway we will see what happens this is all very exciting news it's getting me at least very amped up about the cyber truck delivery event i hope we find out very soon when it's going to be in the meantime i hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content, especially if you want to see my video about Elon and his IAC talk about space from yesterday that I will be releasing tomorrow. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store link is in the description we have tesla bot t-shirts the tesla meme t-shirt success is a possible outcome 4680 battery cells all of that stuff is on t-shirts mugs tumblers and on and on so check it out and finally a big thank you once again to ag1 for sponsoring today's video don't forget to check out my link in the description get your year supply of vitamins d3 and k2 five travel packs and start feeling better soon in the meantime i'll see you in the next one bye bye